Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Next Level. I'm JVL, joined today by my best friends, Sarah Longwell and Tim Miller from The Bulwark. Uh, if you are enjoying the show today, I want you to do two things for me. First, mash the subscribe button. It's, it's right down there. And second, come over to thebulwark.com. We just we make content every day, and it's like free. So just we for publish you. articles just for you. Well, for, for everybody, really. Uh, articles, podcasts, videos. Uh, come over to thebulwark.com, sign up, and you'll get free stuff from Charlie Sykes and me and Tim Miller every day, and even Sarah when she writes. Quarterly. In fact, I edited a piece from Sarah, a really, really good piece, like two weeks ago, and I haven't heard back on the edits. But... Uh, <laughs> That's okay. Hey, listen, Hopefully before it is like we uh, finally subject matter. It's evergreen. <laughs> before we uh get going, I have a little little heel turn I'd like to do for you guys. Ugh. Leaning into New York. Ugh. Leaning all the way into New York. How so do you he like texts he texts me the other night, Tim, and he's like, I love living in the greatest city in the country. And I was like, Bro, the you world. live in New Jersey. Hoboken. The world. You live it. In- he lives in New Jersey, rural, just FYI. Rural New Jersey. Yeah, why don't you, uh, why don't you both come over and uh, we'll get some gabagool. We'll go over to my friend Anthony's house, I, and he makes, he makes gabagool is so good. Yeah, not only Oof, are you uh, not a New Yorker, but you look horrible in that hat. <laughs> uh, it makes you look uglier. Uh, it makes your spirit uglier. And um, and I, I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. It helps me throw batteries at the opposing players. Yeah, no, that's Philly. It's great. Wasn't even, that's doing the right anyway. thing. That's that's Philly. No, I don't like it. And I also have added bad vibes because all of these people, you people are trying to thrust baseball on me. This is where I can get in line with our non-sport listeners who hate it when we, do, we talk yeah. about sports. I'm watching the football game this weekend, and they cut into it to watch Mike Judge from the from the Simpsons or whatever his name is, like trying to very sh- good, yeah, trying to very trying to yeah. do. Why a would home you run? care about somebody breaking Roger Maris? I, who cares? Hey, I, listen, I, and it Speaking takes forever. Sports, it took like a whole quarter of the football game. One at bat, he's stepping out of the batter's box. He's chewing his gum. He's asking for a pause. They're doing a pick. Because baseball play. is not constrained by the artificial man-made concept of time. Yeah, that's why. Uh, so let's talk sports. Herschel Walker, former football great, in the news. Sarah, what do you think? I don't think fucking around counts as sports, but uh, so of a sort. I gotta tell you, you guys know sports. Not I, I, I played them, uh, but I, I'm not a big observer me. of them. Huh? What? Quite, a, quite a bit better than me, actually. Yeah, I played, I played a lot of them, but don't watch them. So I, I was unaware of the Herschel Walker until I started doing. Uh, like, okay, I, so, okay, Trump's got this football player, election denier, crazy person he's going to run. I started doing focus groups in the state only, t- and I thought it was absurd at the time. Like, I was like, well, this person doesn't have a chance. And then I went down to Georgia, like the devil, and I <laughs> listened to some Georgia voters talk to me about Herschel Walker, God of the state, he can do no wrong. Uh, yeah. I remember my favorite my favorite focus group anecdote about Herschel Walker is that um, we were telling a group of swing voters. Have you heard the story about him playing Russian roulette with a live bullet that he would stand there, hold the gun to his temple and pull the trigger. Um, And the person said, uh, well, well, that's Herschel. I guess he just keeps winning. All he does is win. All he does is win. So this is when I knew that Herschel Walker was of a different just a different whole phenomenon down there. But just really quick on um, this, you so you'd never heard of him? Like the name Herschel Walker didn't even ring a but didn't register something deep in your brain stem? I don't think so. Hmm. Um I, I mean, but I gotta tell you, um, there are certain phenomena that pass me by, um, almost wholly. Uh I would say um the the Royals, um, Donald Trump in did city? entirely. I mean, I knew who he was, right? Because like, he's ephemeral. Right. Like he's out there in the, but I don't care about him. I don't follow it up. So to the extent if I'd heard Jeffrey Dahmer, I only just realized, I just watched this Netflix Jeffrey Dahmer thing. Did you know he killed, he was gay and he mostly killed gay people who were mostly black and brown? I didn't know any of that. That's different. That's not like a social trend. That's like you missed a true crime story from the, the early 1990s. Okay. Well, but anyway, I have a lot of thoughts but, about but, Jeffrey Dahmer, but we should probably circle back to Herschel. Yeah, let, we, let, we can hit, we can hit that at Herschel. the end. But here's the so here's so I that's your no, I had not really heard that much about Herschel. Here's the thing. Um 
I, I what I don't understand now that this has come to light that he um, paid for an abortion. Um, the woman allegedly the allegedly paid for an abortion. I'm sorry. Um, thank you. Uh, I know how you're one eighth of a lawyer. Um, <clears throat> the the woman produced uh, a very a, a card. A get he sent well a get, card. Uh, he sent a get, get well, well card. card. Rested, um, relaxed, and recovered. I, don't, I mean, yeah. that's ho- that's horrific. Get well soon. I get think, get well soon. Well, what you think he should have sent a condolences card, Tim? I, 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 I don't know if like a Hallmark. <laughs> I don't think that Hallmark has like a rack. Thinking of you, rack for I'm. I just paid for your abortion. You got cards for that I pressured right? you into. But I, I don't. You're I don't, one of a my nice uh, notes, you're one of my my women note, that I've impregnated. A nice dinner. A handwritten note, maybe a, a I, yeah, I, I don't know. Get well soon seems not up for the occasion. I guess that's what I do know. What is exact? What is appropriate? Open question. Get well soon. Quite a bit. Short. I think I think it conveys uh, the manner of a person who, and I think we're hearing some of this from his his son, uh, did this with a lot of women. And had some protocols in place for how he dealt with things. That uh, that, uh, that makes it sound like there's more forethought than I think is really going into this. I think it's a uh, Herschel Walker sees a squirrel, squirrel, and then like figures out how to get out of it and move on to the next thing. Do you know right. how how much effort I have to muster to send a card to anybody <laughs> or anything? <laughs> I just I just think that this was something sure that like thing. this was how he and and this woman Allegedly. like. So she she literally alleged well not alleged she she does have receipts she produced the card. of money uh of and so the check like, she and the check right so she's got the bank and statements the like with as the kids say she account. has the receipts but it literally she has the receipts so I I don't know perhaps fabricated whatever although um what was interesting last night was to watch it play out publicly and to watch um uh. Some on the right, Eric Erickson, uh, for one, to be like, well, we've always all known this about Herschel Walker. Well, Herschel Walker, Walker simultaneously was reacting, saying, this never happened. Only then to shortly thereafter have his son come out and say, of course, this happened. And let me tell you all about him. And the thing is about Herschel, and, and this morning is another video in which he calls him a liar. But the thing uh, is like the idea that that we would all believe Herschel Walker after they have uncovered, I believe, four secret children of his since this campaign began and for four children by four different women I think right. as, uh, two of them were secret love children maybe I, it's hard to keep track to be honest no christian was the only acknowledged started, child right you remember the when this started it was because he had lied to his own campaign staff about the existence of these mm. other mm. this other paternity Right? right, these other instances of paternity. So he's such an inveterate liar that he has already lied to his own workers. What? Well, why would the people of Georgia think that he's not lying to them now, Sarah? Well, I mean, this is not a. This, I mean, this is clearly. This is a look. I, 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 there's part of me that that uh, is so disgusted by the fact that Republicans allowed this person to run, that everybody let Donald Trump have his way. Wow, that thinks that cleared the, the field for Cleared the field for him, that Mitch McConnell endorsed him. So like, there's part of me that wants to be like, great job, guys, uh, and really like lean into this. The problem is it is such a like horrible, like gross situation that then there's that part of me that says, God, this is awful. Like this poor kid and like these poor other kids and honestly, Herschel Walker seems like he is so funny. People talk about Joe Biden's, you know, in infirm, uh, you know, <laughs> oh, mental yeah. acuities. Like Herschel Walker is not there. Uh, he can't string a sentence together. And so, like, part of me also just feels bad. Like, I, I, I am hesitant to sort of dunk on it. But the people I will dunk on are the Republicans who put this guy forward. Um, it is shameless. Well, I've got great news for the listeners. I do not feel hesitant at all to dunk on this. <laughs> I hope not. Uh, so I'm glad Sarah is, I appreciate where Sarah's coming from and is showing a little discretion. Uh, but I don't, I don't, I'm not choosing to share it. Uh, here's the, here's the thing. I, you guys are both kind of hitting around it, but I mean, Walker, I, they didn't even have a primary. Right, this was all known, and this is this is this, this is the parallel to the to, to the Trump element. It is not as if there was any question 
that Herschel Walker might possibly be in the ballpark of prepared to be a United States senator, right? Like anyone who spent one minute with him could tell that he uh, that he wasn't. Anyone who spent one minute watching or 10 minutes or whatever, watching his old, um, what, what was it? Uh, what, wasn't, what was the other one? The 2020 interview, you know, which I did for that original Herschel Walker I wrote for the article I wrote for the Bulwark a year and a half ago. Like anyone that spent 10 minutes watching that is like, th- this person needs mental help. Like he needs around the clock psychiatric care. Uh, you know, he needs a support group of of other men. If, if he wants to do a Christian men support group, right, where they go on retreats, like that's where what he needs to be doing, right? Like dealing with his own issues, not being put in front of cameras every day, not not being responsible for whether we're sending aid to the Ukrainians or not while they're being invaded, right? Like that, not being responsible for women's uteruses. Okay, like this is not this is a person that needs help. That was very obvious. It was so obvious. We wrote an article about it before he was even a candidate demonstrating how obvious it was. And yet Mitch McConnell looks at this. Rick Scott looks at this and is like, well, he's famous. He's famous. Might as well just go with it. Trump wants him. Why deal with the fight? Why deal with the primary? Why fight on any principles? Why actually try to care about anything? You know, LOL, nothing matters. And it's like, this was all predictable. Then, then everything we predicted came to pass, and then his his numbers started doing poorly. And you know what? The, all these same assholes did in that last this past summer. Let's go try to get they rushed down him. to help him. Let's save him, Brett Let's O'Donnell. Go to Operation Rescue Herschel. Yeah, Brett O'Donnell, the fa- most famous speech writing coach in Republican politics. We'll send him in. Gail Gitcho, my old colleague for from Mitt Romney's campaign, Mitt Romney's spokesperson. Like these are not. This is not the MAGA nuts. Like they sent in the A team. Okay, let's send an A-team to try to help him. And all these same people put their names in Politico and said, I'm going to be here to help Herschel. Herschel was not helpable. Okay, Herschel was a fucking disaster from the start on preparedness, on his, on, on his personal behavior, his personal ethics, on the fact that he was, he's a compulsive liar. We all knew it, but they all don't give a fuck. Okay, like all they wanted was Mitch McConnell to be the Senate leader. And it's like, who cares? Herschel will be a good boy and do, you know, what he's told like that. I mean, that is the like, let's just be honest. Like that is their mindset looking into this. And there's obviously some racial elements, um, subtext to that, um, though they're doing this. They did the same exact thing with Tommy Tuberville and, you know, they're they're doing it with others. So like these guys don't give a don't give a don't care. And um, it's all blowing up in their face. And I got to tell you, I was enjoying it. I was enjoying it. I feel bad for Herschel. I do. But but just kind of scrolling. Through, I don't really feel bad for Herschel, actually. I feel bad for Christian, I meant, which we can get to next. Uh, I, just, a, just a hair. I, I'd like to spend a little time on Christian to explain why I don't feel that bad for him. But I feel a little bad for Christian because it's tough. But but all these assholes that are getting their comeuppance, I, 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 I'm, I'm enjoying it. And I hope that they all enjoyed putting out their statement from the NRSC about how the liberal media is out to get her oh. Walker like a bunch of soul. What Democrats talk. and their partners in the media always do, Tim. It's right? amazing this how is... the Democrats got to his son. Wow. And, uh, and, and Newt Gingrich saying it's one of the most vicious smears he's ever seen. I, so, uh, you know, the national right to life group, uh, his mm-hmm. big endorser, Herschel Walker, they think he's going to be a great champion for life in Georgia. And uh, none of this matters to any of these people, right? None of them are going to win. Now, it may matter to some small percentage of Republican or swing voters. And I, you know, I, I, I would bet that the vast majority of Republican voters are going to look at this and say either uh, it's not true, it's a media lie. It was all in the past. He's a different man. Or who cares? Like, I want Team Republican. But maybe some, you know, maybe 3% of those people will say, I'm going to stay home. And if they do, then Herschel Walker will be in a lot of trouble. But from the institutional side, none of those people are going to walk away from him. No. National right, national right to life is not going to walk away from him. The Republican Party writ large is not going to walk away from him. And this will become yet another litmus test. I mean, so Tim, the, the, the thing about Herschel and the McConnell endorsement, I actually disagree. I don't think McConnell was looking at Herschel as Herschel was being put forth by Trump. 
and thinking he's our best chance to win. I think McConnell looked at that as, I need to get right with the MAGAs somehow. And so I can't be seen as pushing back against this. And so I'm going to hug Herschel to sort of, you know, butch up some of my MAGA bona fides at a vulnerable moment for me. And then once they were in, uh, they thought, well, we got to make, you know, make chicken salad out of this, right? I know. I think they didn't want the fight. Right? But let's just be yeah, sure. Maybe that's something about MAGA bona fides, but, but Mitch is probably not going to run again, right? And like, who's he... Who's he trying to fix? His own caucus? I think the, these assholes haven't learned a damn thing in seven years. And like they thought that they can just do the same thing. They can own this guy and like whatever, else some problems. Nobody will really care. It'll be a red wave year. They'll sweep, he'll, he'll sweep in. We'll, we won't have to deal with these with the, with a bloody primary fight. I mean, in any sane world, in anything even bordering on a sane world, Brad Raffensperger. <laughs> who just like overwhelmingly won, did the right thing as Secretary of State, has been tagged, negged by JVL and some bulwark people for not exactly being, you know, you know, going all the way there on the implication on, on the, 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 you know, the results of all the things that he claims, like acting as if, you know, may, maybe you should act a little differently if you're on the one hand, you're saying the president pressured you into stealing the election and ending the democracy. On the other hand, maybe that should make you reassess some things about the president <laughs> and his party. But he has, didn't do that. But he did the right thing. He did the right thing. He's a down-the-line conservative. Like, how, how was he not a better bet for the Senate? Like He's a slam dunk, right? But actually supporting Brad Raffensperger would have meant, okay, we would have had to deal with this primary. We would have had to deal with Donald Trump's shit. You know, I would have had to show, like, just one scintilla of moral courage and 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 they've all decided that they don't they don't do that right that, that nothing matters right they've already sold their soul what reason do they have to show a scintilla of moral courage now but but like the thing is i just i hate to let people off the hook on that one because it's like well obviously they weren't going to be for raffensburger tim but obviously why ryan kemp won his primary couldn't Kemp and couldn't is it is it crazy to think that Raffensperger could have won a primary that if they if they put out all yes. this opera yes. on Herschel? It's yes. I'm sorry. I like I I I I, I agree about, with you generally, but governor? if we're gonna get into what about the lieutenant uh, governor? That's what I'm, I'm saying. I'm saying like there might be somebody, but like the Raffensperger got pulled over the line on a combination of name recognition, Kemp's performance, and Democrats crossing over to vote for him. Like, he would have gotten destroyed in a Republican primary. Okay, yeah, so. sure. Okay, but like like the, the, the lieutenant governor, I think like, Kemp did it, right? Kemp couldn't have found somebody that they could have won, that could have run against this guy? Uh, I think that's a good point. I mean, this is, and this is, this is sort of it, right? Is that Herschel Walker, the phenomenon of Herschel Walker running for the Senate was done with the consent of a whole bunch of people who knew better. Um, and I think to Tim's point about the schadenfreude, like I'm not gonna have schadenfreude for like the Walker family, but for the Republicans who allowed this to happen and just kind of close their eyes and cross their fingers, like let's just hope his celebrity gets him over. And every single one of us knows that he is unqualified, that this is bad for the country. Uh, it's probably bad for his family. And they went ahead and, and it is exploitative. Um, they deserve uh, absolutely to lose. Um, it's nice to see Donald Trump continuing. I mean, we don't know this for sure yet. <clears throat> I think we should just talk for a second about whether or not there will be a political consequence to this. But if there is, uh, that's the third Senate seat Donald Trump will have caught, um, <laughs> lost in Georgia uh, in just a few years. Well, before we do the political side of it, let's just spend one minute on, on Christian, because I do think okay. this is relevant. And, and I think that it's relevant to whether there will be political consequences. For people who not, have not uh, obsessive uh, freaks like me and do not know who Christian Walker is or people who aren't on TikTok, just a quick background. Uh, Herschel Walker's son is a gay uh, TikTok star. He was a national cheerleading champion. So he's touching all the bases on the gay stuff. Um, this is not like he's, a, you know, he's a conservative thought leader and he's also gay. Like he's gay, gay, gay. Like that's his, the center to his brand is I'm gay and I'm also a conservative. He's extremely outspoken. He's a, that, that is like the understatement of the year. He's like kind of an obnoxious troll, really. Um, he, uh, he was one of the main agitators, not maybe main, but one of the most visible agitators of the fact that the election had been stolen, uh, certainly to the teen 20 something set, you know, who are on TikTok, like Christian might have been the person that they saw besides Trump, like the most often thing like this election was stolen. He drug his dad onto Maria Bartromo show 
which they did together. Um, if you want looked at which I did, if you like look at Herschel's Twitter feed closely during this period after the election, there were some very similar things to what Christian was tweeting. And some might think that that meant Christian was copying his dad. I, I think there's a lot of evidence that points the other way, right? Like that he was, in, you know, influencing his dad. Um, he is, I, he had a millions of, of followers. I, he keeps getting his account canceled for like doing lies and conspiracy stuff. Um, but he keeps adding back on and has 600. So like, this is a very public, like very well-known person. Um, he is a very beautiful boy. He's beautiful. Yeah, he's beautiful. He has. He, he is has, like. He, has, he is an unbelievable looking. He has a lot of weird opinions. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, and he 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 did a, his last. I think just for reference, as a reference point, I think his last big controversial thing is he said that I'm not going to call my. I'm not going to use the word gay anymore more because it's been because uh, uh, the LGBTQIA plus the furries and the the non-binaries and everybody have have taken this away from me and sexualized it all and made it about gender and i'm just a guy that likes penis so okay whatever um you know he he has he's out there and clearly he has some issues uh given the fact that you know what he went through uh and so i i think that it's important to recognize this is not like ron reagan jr like coming out against his dad right <laughs> this is a, this is don jr coming out against his dad like the the even more magnified next generation so let's um if, if for people who haven't heard of it yet let's uh Sebastian, can we play the clip of what christian is saying about his dad today i stayed silent as the atrocities committed against my mom were downplayed i stayed silent when it came out that my father herschel walker had all these random kids across the country none of whom he raised and you know my favorite issue to talk about is father absence surprise because it affected me that's why I talk about it all the time, because it affected me. Family values, people. He has four kids, four different women, wasn't in the house raising one of them. He was out having sex with other women. Do you care about family values? I have a silent lie after lie after lie. The abortion card drops yesterday. It's literally his handwriting in the card. They say they have receipts, whatever. He gets on Twitter. He lies about it. Okay, I'm done. Done. Everything has been a lie. Wow. And I will say Herschel Walker, like he was at an event when the story broke. <clears throat> and so he immediately said he was going to sue the Daily Beast for defamation mm -hmm. uh, Tuesday like the morning. next day. Like, yeah, Tuesday morning, immediately going to sue. Then his son came out and kind of blew up his spot, which I'm I don't I, I haven't seen the lawsuit. I'm not, I'm not sure that thing's getting filed today. Can I just caution people? I guess, this is a thing that, bought, you know, to. <laughs> I always say this about Andrew Sullivan, right? Andrew Sullivan has been this idiot who's been wrong about everything and used any club at hand for like 35 years of his professional life. And then, yeah, but because I Andrew like Sullivan Andrew is, Sullivan. is Sorry. Same. Yeah, I kind of like Andrew. Because Andrew has been on every side of every issue and, you know, like he's smart, he's not dumb. Uh, when he winds up on your side of the issue, the, whoever you are and whatever the issue is, the temptation is always to be like, well, now, Andrew's making a lot of sense now, right? This is, no, it's just like, this is just where the spinner has stopped right now. And the same thing with, with Christian Walker. Like, I would not, I don't, I, no, I would I'll, not put no, too much on. stock totally, in anything that he says, to be quite no, honest. No, no, I reject everything that you just said. Every sentence. For starters, yeah. like, Andrew's been decently okay. consistent on a lot of things, okay? So he was about the thing, he's convinced me on certain things. Uh, he was for gay marriage for anybody was, for pot legalization mm -hmm. for anybody was, so... You know, everybody's got their issues, and that's fine. Andrew has his. I have some my issues with Andrew, but um, this is this is not that okay. For for another reason is this isn't an issue. It's not like Christian Walker happens to agree with me right now on school vouchers or like permanent daylight savings time or the war in Ukraine. Well, like what he's doing he is saying my election, father, and now he's telling me like you can't, you can't. No, what he's you know, doing is the guy, my won. father abandoned me my mother was scared of him we had to go to six different houses and i forget if it was six months or six years to get away from him he was abusive he's a liar he's a compulsive liar and 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 it's an admission against interest because i'm out there getting fame off of this i'm out there ideologically aligned with my insane father maybe even influencing my insane father's ideology so it's not as if this is like, oh, Christian Walker changed his mind on on Obamacare, and now I, now yeah, I want to make I, him the face of it. Like, like, like this is a this is a kid 
who is who is who has once been a witness's hurt. credibility has been impeached like you can't take anything else they say after that seriously um you know, right. the he's are much saying more the truth than christian i'm, so, Walker, I'm sorry right? we are we sure as, he may be saying the truth now as smart the, people much more important smart people can assess what t- when two insane people are fighting one of them has to be right Okay, when they're on two different opposite sides, and one sure. of them is saying this didn't well, happen, and one of them saying to... it did happen, we can assess um, which one of the insane yes. people is offering more evidence in their case. And it's obviously the kid who's been uh, like taken advantage of by his famous father for for years, and 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 been a victim of his famous father. And just because he has horrible opinions on like basically mm-hmm. everything, doesn't mean that that didn't happen. Right. So he's been victim. I, 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 I take JVL's I take JVL's point that like one can be skeptical <clears throat> of this I'm young saying, man. Based no, on, but however, that's however, all. that's all uh, I'm saying. Yeah. If I'm you make him a martyr. If you listen to him though, so he has he's made several videos this morning, which I have watched. <laughs> but uh one of them is totally is, normal thing to do. Yeah. One of them is he 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 talks a lot about how he was gonna stay quiet. Like he was fine keeping his mouth shut until his father started lying about it that to me sounds pretty credible like and and he actually says like all you republicans calling me up telling me you'll lose us control of the senate he's like well he's lying about all this and he's lying about my mother and like this is all untrue that that i think is that sounds pretty credible to me and that you can see how he was willing right he was originally willing to keep his mouth shut but what he wouldn't do is sort of swallow the lie. Oh. He also said, interestingly, in that that they promised him early that his father was going to own up to all of his mistakes, take responsibility for it, like out of the gate, um, and then move on from it. And like he was okay with that. But that's not what well, happened. This was he just the started pitch. lying. It's what they. It's what he did in this whole op-ed where he was attacking Bill or whatever, right? Like this was Herschel's yeah. initial. That, so again, more credibility to what Christian is saying. Herschel's whole plan or whatever like what what the people were thrusting on him if he didn't lie to his own people was going to be you know i you know a solid damascus type thing right like i'm i'm a christian now i had psychological problems i had to deal with my i was you know i i you know i've seen the lord it's this whole thing about how when remember when he's the story about how he's chasing the, the was it a woman or a man he's chasing someone he's trying to kill them and he's was a guy yeah he's, a guy, he's got the voices himself. in my head or i like, kill this guy and then god told me no, do the right thing. Uh, so because he saw the bumper sticker, right. there was a bumper yeah. sticker on the guy's car. <laughs> yeah, so he had the awakening, him. right? So, but maybe yeah. that so that would make sense that he would tell Christian, like, "Look, I'm going to apologize to what I did for your mother. I, I may, I was sinful, I was fallen. I've seen the Lord, and I, you know, that's a reasonable thing to expect that he's going to do, and also think that that it's crazy that he runs." But that that but you you're imagine? balancing. Humans are complicated. You're an in- influencer. You're like, how many more followers am I going to get if he runs? I don't like the fact that this is going to be bad. Right? I, I, it's it's a very understandable uh, sequence of events. Can you imagine Herschel Walker running a Senate office? Like, you know, to oh be a senator, God. like you've got like a bunch of employees, Not and women. you got to like hire people and fire people. So I'm like the whole the whole idea of him as a senator makes the job of governance into a joke yeah and i will say with knowing that right the idea that republicans could still win yeah he could still win and the idea that like and this is like in the before times right before access hollywood we would be having a different conversation about the repercussions of something like this we would say like okay you there's surface video video footage has surfaced from your wife talking about how you held a gun to her head uh more than once because she starts out with the first time he held a gun to my head um you have four secret children you uh paid for an abortion despite being a uh no exceptions rape incest life of the mother a guy politician right now and your son has said that you are lying about all of it so that would be like game over. You're done because Republicans would walk away from you because they would care about preserving their own credibility. But they have learned some some very terrible lessons uh, since Donald Trump happened. And and um, it was interesting to watch, you know, people like Eric Erickson. And he was getting a lot of play last night because those are nights where people's um, cynicism and their lack of um clear morals despite despite being people for whom morals are their brand uh becomes on full display because they are quick to rush to the defense uh and say either somewhere between 
hey, we all already knew this. Old news, which is literally the words he used. Old news. Ah, we already knew this. Uh, to being like <laughs> avowed pro-lifers. Like decent people walk away and do not defend somebody yes. like Herschel and, Walker. And in a lot of ways, Eric is like trying to rationalize it and justify it in a way that is almost like not the worst in the degree of, I, you know, I saw there's Lisa Marie Booth, a Fox person, who's somebody who I used to pal around with in D.C. She, you know, just tweets, I, I, if I moved to Georgia, I would still vote for Herschel Walker after this. And again, think about the practice. These people all stood up for Roy Moore. Yeah, right. They all stood up for <laughs> like, all of them. Like, <laughs> I, like Eric is like trying to work the convoluted like like gears in his brain to try to get to a yes. Like these other people aren't even doing that. It's just not, it's just sociopathy. So uh, just uh, before we move, I, I do want to kind of just circle back to the political element of this and like whether it will matter. And because yeah, I that's already what I wanted was, to get from you too. What's that? That's what I wanted to get from you too. Okay, yeah. So I, I um, I already saw. You know, po Ken White Popat is great, but tweeted like, "No, these people aren't going to care about this. His voters aren't going to care about this." And I do think this is why people should be Bullard Plus members and listen to the focus group because uh, you don't have to actually go to Georgia like I did to hear from voters. I, a lot of these people are complicated. Right? Like, sure, it, or is eighty percent of the Republican base just going to blindly vote R no matter whether it's Roy Moore, David Duke or Herschel Walker or like Louis Farrakhan, like doesn't matter. Yeah, sure. I, of course. Um, the, uh, but there, there are people that are weighing it and, you know, I, and I think, I'm sure you think about people in your mind in the focus groups there, but I think from, you know, when I was interviewing folks about this in Georgia, one guy stands out, I was at the Kemp event and I went up to just the first guy I saw that I figuring he was going to be just a strong R type. And I asked him, I was like, what do you think about her? You know, obviously you're here for Kemp. What do you think about Herschel? And he's like, oh, I don't know about that guy. I, you know, he's like, I'm going to vote for him because I'm a Republican. But I was like, oh, OK, but, I, you know, I'm trying to I'm interested in people that might vote for Kemp and Walker. And he's like, my, you might have my wife. He's like, I don't know yet. She hasn't told me she's a strong Republican, but I don't think she can vote for Herschel. She's a she's a family woman and, and the stuff about his family. Right. So I think about that. Right. And it's like I. I, you, you forget that there are people out there that might just be like, I'm not going to write that line, you know? And that's something, right? Like nudging somebody like that guy's wife from Kemp Walker to Kemp, you know, I'm writing in Billy Graham, right? Or whatever, or, or Kemp not writing in. That's, that's, that's a plus one, right? Like moving that person from Kemp Walker to Kemp Warnock is a plus two, right? Like an in net, right? right? Vote change. So I, I just, I do, I think it's wrong when you just listen to these types of voters, you know, particularly there are a lot of, despite the fact that pro-life Inc. is is nihilistic and full of shit, there, there are still a lot of people out there that bought what they were selling and that are pro-life and, and varying degrees of genuineness that, that might look at this and say, I can't moral, I can't personally vote for this person. Maybe I can't vote for Warnock either because he's pro-choice, but I can't vote for this person. I, I, I do think that there is a significant gettable group here. And to, and to and just to wave it away like Access Hollywood, I think is wrong. Sarah? Uh, well, I agree with that, sort of. Um, I, I mean, I, I think that, I'm not trying to wave it away like Access Hollywood. I think that how Access Hollywood changed the way that we react I, yeah, to I these things, I didn't right? to imply that. So like Republicans are running to defend him, but I agree with you on the voters, right? There are a lot of voters, and I, I think it's funny. I, I've always sort of thought that this race, I we always think in terms of like the Kemp Warnock voters, these college-educated suburban voters who look at Herschel Walker and they're like, this guy's not up to this job. And I was always like, you know, I think you could probably get a lot of those people. My concern was that there would be plenty of independents and even Democrats who would literally be like, Herschel forever you know and like for no <laughs> go dog, go dog. yeah just right like like he that's that's how he scrambles the political situation is because he's just a different he's not like a normal political candidate um but i do think that um i hear when the focus groups people talk about the struggle in the booth all the time like how they sit there and think about these things and i think there's a lot of people for whom the steady drumbeat, and I think, look, those ads about him putting the gun to his wife's head are just airing relentlessly in Georgia. And I think there's got to be a lot of women who are like, no, no. Yeah, and men. I mean, the guy, the guy that I interviewed, yeah. DC Aiken, the guy who who I interviewed for the story, who's literally JVL's Foghorn Leghorn voice as a human. I, I, I mean, this is DC Aiken. I'm <laughs> great guy. I just mean like that's how he sounds. And and he even he he said he's like. 
you know, I've been in this politics game, used to be a city councilman or something. I know how you can contort things and ads and stuff, but you can't contort what that lady's saying on the ad. And like, that's just not, I can't go there. I can't do that. That's too far for me. And he's a Trump 2020 voter. So like Mm -hmm. these, yeah, it's not even just women, right? Like that is really bad. It it just, it just shows the amorality of like the Mitch McConnell's again, that like these, these people who are outside of the warped political bubble can like see this more clearly, right? Just like, nope, sorry, that's over the line. Maybe we should have had a competitive primary here. All right, uh, let's move on. We got other stuff to talk about. But before we do that, we have our very first sponsor for the next level. Woot! Uh, yeah, I know it's very exciting. And and also it's a great sponsor for the great product. Uh, it is fall. It's it's cold. I love this up in New Jersey. We, we get a real fall. We get vest weather for close to like 10 or 11 weeks. And what I like to do is crack the windows open in in the bedrooms so you get like the nice brisk chill of air coming in fall air in the night but then you're cuddled up in 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 bed and we got new sheets from bowl and branch and i am a huge sheet snob i'm guessing tim that you are too of no of yeah uh, I, I, I am an ab- my wife goes crazy for me with my obsessing about sheets. And uh, this is when when we heard that Bowl and Branch was gonna gonna be a sponsor, I was like, oh, this is amazing because I'm gonna get to troll my wife so hard because these sheets are so good. So she likes your uh, wife likes uncomfortable is. sheets. I don't understand what the troll is. No, Do you not let her sleep in the bed with the sheets? So. She she has this thing where she insists that like uh design doesn't matter Ugh. and i think does good design matters and it matters in everything it matters in a can opener it matters in uh a campaign poster and it matters in sheets and bowl and branch sheets the the key the secret sauce is the uh the the long spun cotton and it's so good it's so good Tim. Okay, so, so, wait, so my 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 sheets haven't come yet. I'm I'm wait, they're arriving soon. But so why are they so good? What what is the particular? I got to tell you, I, we spend a lot of money on sheets in our household, and so I, yeah. I, I was skeptical that they, they would be an upgrade. And uh, we threw them on right before I went on uh, this little trip to Arizona, and uh, I hopped in there in the afternoon. Now I'm not I don't get this this, this whole fall thing. Like oh, I'm excited to get inside the sheets because it's fall and I love pumpkin spice latte. I fuck fuck fall. I get depressed in fall, all right? It's about going back to school. It's getting darker. And so you know what I need to get in and just kind of get in the fetal position in a nice comfy situation, right? And deal with my fall de- depression. <laughs> and I did that uh, in the late afternoon uh, last week. And, and, and it was just a massive upgrade. I had these hipster bamboo sheets, you know, you, you thought that was going to be, no, no, no. Long staple I, cotton. Yeah. Go, go. That's with what, this is what the luxury is. The luxury is yeah. the materials used and it's long. Very comfy, cotton. huge it's, upgrade, immediate so upgrade good. on my bed. Yeah. Uh, my, my test for sheets, like really good, well-made sheets is that it needs to feel both supple <laughs> and substantial, right? So supple and substantial. And that's, that's what they are. They're, they're really good. Really and good I, for I'm me. Telling you supple. This, I don't know like, about I, supple. I've got to Google it, but I, really I, good. I am a, a, an evangelist for products I love, uh, even when we're not getting like sponsored for them, which is why I do a lot of dishwasher talk, a lot of watch talk. Uh, this stuff is great. They send us a free pair of sheets, and I am 100% going to go and spend my own money on some more Bowen Branch stuff because uh, they have not just sheets. They have other stuff too, which looks great. So uh, I will be spending my own money at Bowen Branch and you guys should too. Uh, so what we uh, ask you to do is try the sheets that make fall the coziest season of the year. Get 15, I didn't know you could do that. We can get 15% off of your first set of sheets and free shipping when you use the promo code next level at bowlandbranch.com. That's bowl and branch, B O L L A N D branch.com. Promo code next level. Hey, bowl and branch guys, thanks for being our first sponsor. We love your stuff. Okay. Uh, so we did, uh, we did Herschel Walker, and I guess, I guess that Dr. Oz is lucky 
that this week Herschel Walker turns out to have allegedly paid for an abortion, since this week we also found out that Dr. Oz has killed hundreds of puppies. Yeah. Is this a is this, this a thing is Oppo, Oppo care about? October, man? Oppo October. I you know, it, I, just as a piece of uh, political, I don't know, craftsmanship, Tim, have you noticed? Do you think people are moving up their Oppo dumps because of early voting? Like, do we have to get our temperatures set differently now for when we're going to get the hot stuff? I do. Well, so yes, I do think so. And it was something we thought about um, even as early as 2016, right? Which was trying to get stuff out in early October rather than the traditional, you know, it was the Bush October surprise was literally Halloween, like the Dan Rather, yeah. uh, or not, uh, you know, the drunk drive, not the, or the drunk driving one um, with Gore. I, and that was like November one or something. Uh, the October surprise was October 30th. You do it earlier now. That is a strategic move. I, I think that's probably what's happening with Oz here and the mass puppy murder. Um, uh, but I, 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 I have a good authority that um, that the Herschel thing was not actually Oppo. Uh, and, and it's just, it, we've gone this long. We should credit uh, Roger Solenberger over at the at the Daily Beast who got it. And I do think it's got those good old-fashioned source um, gathering. Uh, and the reason why I know that is because I was in Georgia, as you guys know, writing about this race, asking everybody, give me your oppa, give me your oppa, let me do it, let me, let me, <laughs> let me chef Herschel. And I, I, several people I heard, they're like, don't got anything, you know, that's, that's good, but the Daily Beast is working on something huge. So um, I, I just, I do think that that was uh, just a, a real reporting, but but the, the Oz thing has all the, all the hallmarks of a, a classic oppo. And Does to, anybody care about this? Like, I'm not a dog puppy person, dog. so I look at this and I'm like, eh. I don't know. I went and read, like, the actual thing. And so I, I, I think that there is a little bit, he is sort of removed from it, right? Like, I, this is not, I don't think, Dr. Oz, like, conducting his own experiments. He was, like, overseeing a team that was no, doing. No, he's not Michael Vick. Right. He was overseeing right. a team that was doing, I think, legitimate uh, experiments of some kind. It works, right? You run a lab and you got a bunch of researchers and PhDs beneath you who are doing the experiments. And right. That's right. Now, but what I read that was sort of the, 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 the terrible part is, so he signs like a waiver taking responsibility for all of the things that happen. And there's very strict protocols for how you treat animals that you're doing experiments on. Um, and I think there's like extra ones for dogs. Um, and one of them is that you, you know, they have to be, uh, like euthanized at a certain point, or they have to have things that keep them from feeling pain. Um, you know, when, they, and like, so a bunch of that wasn't being followed is the allegation. And in, there was like some fines levied, but they were small. It was like $2,000. Um, and so like what I couldn't quite figure out is, and what I'm not sure whether or not, this is the kind of thing, actually, I think it, it, it does stick potentially like people love their dogs like Fetterman's response was just to take a photo of himself with his dogs and say like I'm hugging these guys extra hard tonight um but I don't I don't know if Dr. Oz like being a scientist over a lab like I'm not sure how much I don't know I, I that's a hard one doesn't it underline his essential problem with connection though which is that like he's a kind of creepy tv doctor with two percent body fat who smiles too hard and like you know like these things are always only problems if they exacerbate an existing perception or connection problem with with voters and so like on the one hand like i have a hard time thinking that a bunch of rural yinzers who are always going to vote for republicans are going to look at this and say oh no hell no i like my i like my old yeller over there but on the other hand, if you are like a normie type Republican who is already like, you know, do I have to vote for this guy? Maybe this makes you dog say. Murder? I mean, is it true right. that the no, dog, Tim... it's, is it true that the dead dogs and the live dogs were like put in a bag together? That is it. That one of the, the one of the accusations. Yeah, one of the accusations is, is that the dead animals were put in with the puppies. Cruella de Vil. Cruella uh, de Vil. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know that this is a, a vote getter. After, after uh, explaining why in depth why uh, I can imagine a Georgia voter this mattering, I, I don't know. Um, people do care about dogs more than me, though. Maybe this is my dog sociopathy, and this is there's something there. Seamus, obviously, 
had a lot of legs as a story. Um, the uh, the Romney roof dog, uh, and uh, you know, I, I think that in general, Fetterman had kind of lost. He had this drumbeat of just Oz is weird. Oz is not from here. You can't trust him. It's very strange. Like he's not one of us. And like I had lost that, that right? Like the stroke happened. Um, it, it's let's just be honest. He's not doing interviews, so he's not carrying yeah. a message um, that is that is hurting. His entire campaign is shit posting. Yeah, that is that is concerning. Uh, and and yeah. and I think people are legitimately concerned about that. Um, and so and then and then Oz's campaign actually put together a message. Uh, you know, some of which is. Uh, uh, a little, a little race baiting, uh, and a little bit overheated, but but some of it, you know, uh, has legitimate examples of what's of what's on the crime issue, what's been happening in Pennsylvania, and and that has sort of turned the sort of narrative around the race, and so to the extent that things like this can get Fetterman back onto the turf of this dude is such a weirdo. Like maybe it's helpful in the macro more than like somebody's like I was going to be with Oz, and then I heard about the puppy slaughter. Changed my yeah, vote. That's, yeah, that, that's what I was trying to trying to get at. Yeah, let me. Yeah. Like, so I did a Pennsylvania focus group just this week. Um, no, pre puppy slaughter. And you might have to do a follow up. Pre- it was pre puppy slaughter, unfortunately. Um, and I, so I want to tell you about an interesting dynamic. And I, I I told this to you guys before, but it it happened again. It's been happening a lot. So these are Trump sixteen, Biden twenty twenty voters. Pennsylvania zero willing to vote for Mastriano. Mastriano is so well defined. They know exactly how crazy he is, and they all think Josh Shapiro is fine. Uh, okay. Fine. Uh, some some of them even think he's more better than fine. Like actively like him. Okay, so zero at the top of the ticket for the Republican. It's interesting that every single Pennsylvania voter can see that clearly. Yet Ben Sass, Mitt Romney, <laughs> Susan Collins. Oh, it's hard. All our good it's Republicans hard. can't. Our RGA, Doug Ducey, Chris Sununu. Well, Larry the, Hogan, the, so, Charlie Baker. Nobody else can see it as clearly as every single Trump Biden voter that you talk to. To be Curious. fair, the RGA, which is in for Carrie Lake in Arizona, who's equally horrible to Mastriano, they are not doing Mastriano in Pennsylvania. Mastriano has basically no ads on the air. It's actually like a perfect political science experiment to see like what happens if you just don't run any ads <laughs> or like you don't have any air game whatsoever. Um, because usually this doesn't group. happen. Yeah, he's he's like raised very little money. I mean, Shapiro's raised like a gajillion dollars and is just burying him. Um, but but in any event, so so this is so so I've got so we've got our, our our Trump to Biden voters and we've got no Mastriano voters. Oz and Fetterman totally split down the middle, split down the middle group. Um, one of the guys was in a group before we had seen him before and he was going to maybe leave it blank. Uh, but he's now Oz. He's now full Oz. And the reason that these guys had moved more comfortable with Oz was all the crime stuff. Yeah. It was, it is, it is, it is the crime stuff. And I think there's a little bit of the health stuff in there too. Like they're not sure he's up to it. Uh, some of that. Um, but the, and, and, you know, the crime stuff was th- throughout. I mean, the, the, several of them lived in kind of outside of Harrisburg. I'm sorry, outside of Philadelphia. And there was just real condemnation for the mayor, for the way the crime is being handled. Mm. And so um, I know that the JVL, you're very dismissive of people's concerns about crime, but it is a legitimate thing that is in the mix, that is influencing no, these political totally things. True. But- when I'm voting for the United States Senator, the first thing I think about is what will he do to local crime? How, how will my United States Senator force my mayor or my local district attorney or the governor to uh, increase funding for police and stop it. That's that's me too. I'm the same. I just can I just give you the cherry on top? I've told you guys this before. All right. Mm-hmm. Trump to Biden. Oh, no. Zero oh, no, no, don't do this. Better half Fetterman, half Oz. Don't do this to me. Three of them head to head Biden Trump rerun. Go Trump. So they voted for Biden in 20, but they would go back to Trump. Yeah, my of little course. heart. Look at gas prices. Sarah. I'm just seeing more of this. I, I'm just seeing it. And I, I don't know what to tell it's you. It's happening. And this is it's what, happening. And listen, you listen to me. All of these fuckers who went and rolled over for Herschel Walker and the Mitch McConnells of the world and the Charlie, all of these, these institutional Republicans, I am telling you now that they will talk themselves into believing that Trump is actually their best bet to win in 2024. 
And so they have to get behind it. Um, Sebastian, I'm going to need you to clip JBL there because he's going to want that clip replayed at some point in the future, I suspect, uh, as That's I told coming. you so. Uh, listen, so we are starting to run long oh. and we have two, three topics left. And I'm going to let you guys pick which one we do. Okay. We can only do one. Uh, we can do the weirdo pro Russia stuff. We can do uh, Gavin Newsom beatdown. Or we can do, why isn't Brian Kemp the post-Trump future? Just do Tara? Newsom. You want to do Newsom? I, I mean, I, I, well, I, was, I, Tim, do you have a strong feeling was, on this? I just, was, I feel like we should beat up on, I, 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 he's one of my least favorite Democrats. And so if, uh, if, if we want to, if we want to do some bipartisan, okay. Well, why don't we just do rapid fire? We can just do rapid fire. Newsom and Kemp, let's go. Oh yeah, let's, let's do, do it, quick. Let's that, do it that's quick. Fine. Rapid fire. So, uh, so Gavin Newsom is the thirstiest Democrat in America. Uh, he is almost, I think, Ron DeSantis levels of thirsty. Uh, he's been doing. He's challenged Ron DeSantis to a debate because that's normal. Uh, he's got billboards about abortion up in South Carolina, the most important Democratic primary state. Uh, and guess what? He's not going to be president. Uh, if if he were to some, first of all, he's not going to win a Democratic nomination. There is 0.0% chance that he could win a Democratic nomination. Uh, and if he were to somehow, because like a plane went down in which every other person who is running for president of the Democratic Party was was on it and he was the only one left. He would lose to basically any Republican not named Doug Mastriano in a national race, like, you know, 50 to 42. This guy is terrible. He is Bill de Blasio 2020 levels of terrible. And I want him to go away. And he's never going to with his slicked back hair, is he? No, I've had to vote for him, I think, 17 times because <laughs> since I moved to California because there have been so he's many recalls. always running. So he's, I just, oh, my yeah, God. So I just want to say, running. like, I've got street cred here, all right? I held my nose. I voted for him when he was running against the talk radio show host. I voted for him when I, he was running against the weird Trumpy guy that campaigned with the bear. I voted, like, I vote. I do it, okay? So, you know, I, I, I get that he's not the worst politician in America, that, you know, that, that if you're not comparing him to the almighty, that you can find someone that he's better than. But he's really he's really creepy and, and annoying and uh, and thirsty. And it, and I don't it concerns me when I see early 2024 polls that is that his number is popping because, you know, his name ID, you know, he's good at this. He plays the media game. And, and I just I, you, I just. Friends don't let friends respond to auto pollers and tell them that they might vote for Gavin Newsom next time. Like, please stop giving this person encouragement. He's fine. Like, he's fine. He's a flaw. He's just a normal flawed Democratic politician. Uh, he's done some good things. Uh, he fi he finally seems to be getting it on housing lately. I, I, so I just I want to shout that out as a California person. They passed two good housing bills. He yelled at San Francisco and was like, "Build fucking more houses this week." So it's better than nothing. He was early on the gay stuff. It's not like he's Herschel Walker. Like he has some qualities, but his whole vibe is very creepy. He 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 took a picture laying on a rug with Kimberly Guilfoyle, um, where he was like, where they were getting intimate. And that is that doesn't work for me um, uh, in any way. This is Kimberly Guilfoyle is not somebody who's just changed. Like she was always like the way that she is now. Not that you know he's Eskimo brothers with Don, Don Jr. That's uncomfortable. Uh, you don't want to give the Trump family an opportunity to bring that up during a campaign. I mean, like, do, do we do you really want a presidential campaign where Don Jr. is talking about how Gavin didn't fuck his wife as well as he does? Like, it's just it's not good. It, and, and 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 the Barrow article, Josh Barrow did a good article that sort of laid this out. California. Sorry, I love Sarah. California. It's a beautiful state. It has its problems. The Democrats don't want to own all of California's problems on the 2024 campaign. And so let's no. just move on. Thank him for his service and just kind of fi find somebody better. Like Sarah, Gavin I'm sorry Newsom. you had to sit through that. But on the other hand, you did say you wanted to talk about Gavin Newsom. So Yeah. California. Guilfoyle. <laughs> French Laundry. That's Hair. it. No more. No more. Like that, that 
Yeah. Dems shouldn't do it. Yeah. So that's it. I, we we talked. I don't it. think Dems will want to. But I just no. like this guy is just gonna. I'm he's worried gonna about that. I'm worried about it because he's a fighter. The same. I'm a little worried about it too. He knows what he's doing right now with the going toe to toe to Ron DeSantis. Like he wants he wants the benefit of this matchup, um, and uh, and I think. The zealousness with which he is pursuing this is all of the reasons that he is disqualified. Like here, he is, you know, unqualified for this. Um, and yet it is the thing that will give him a lot of early name recognition buzz, et cetera. And here's the thing. The well, Republicans how, how are picking the your buddy boy fight. Tim Ryan slays him in 2024, Sarah. Yeah, well, we need Tim Ryan to win that Senate seat first. Uh, then I think he jumps to the front. I don't know if you're going to do rapid fire with all of these. I... I hate to be the one to say we're running long, but we are, and I've got to go. I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to do rapid fire. I I'm running this. I'm the, the conductor on this train. We're only at 57 minutes, 57 seconds. I'll just say this one more thing because you brought up yeah. the fighting thing, and this is why it's nervous about Gavin Newsom. Then I'll be finished. The the the, the human flaw that that makes people want to see their enemies be owned is not just a flaw that is held among Republican base voters, right? Like it is very overdeveloped in extreme and psychopathic ways among Republican base voters, but other humans have that. I have that weakness. Everyone has that. Not, I mean, not everyone. Many, many people have that weakness. Not Sarah. Democratic base, Sarah's just pure goodness. Sarah's pure goodness. I have that weakness. Democratic base voters do. And if Gavin positions himself as the guy that's willing to whatever, troll the hardest, I, there could be an uh, there could be an appeal that uh, there, and I'm just asking people resist it, resist your internal demons, and just say no, no, thank you. All right, good show, long show. Uh, reminder to everybody: if you like the next level, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, do both of those things right down there, and then go to thebulwark.com. We've got all of the things. We have new articles written every day, new podcasts every day, videos. Uh, go and sign up for Charlie Sykes' fantastic free newsletter, Morning Shots. You can get it at thebulwark.com. I'm promoting one right. non-bulwark thing before we leave. I'm on Showtime's The Circus on Sunday. So if you have Showtime, watch it. If you don't have Showtime, still like tweet at the Showtime people and be like, your guests this week, really handsome. Boy, that great. guy, Tim. He's so thin. Uh, thin. Yeah, smart. Uh, you don't have to watch it. You just You know you're going to get it anyway. Well, you know what? Vice is outside my office right now waiting to film with me. So Tim's not the only one, and that's why I've got to go. It's uh, weird. Nobody ever asks me to do any of these things. <laughs> Look at that hat. Look at that hat. <laughs> Obviously. Gabagool. All right. Bye, guys.